today's video, we're gonna look at the scenario where you might be sitting in a park on the bench. Uh, you might be a lady or man, and a stranger comes and starts harassing you and has got a knife in their hand. So what are we gonna do in that situation? Let's have a look. Perhaps not so much uh, for men, but if you are a lady and you are sitting in a park, some guys may get the idea in their head that they could come and start harassing you. If you happen to look rich, maybe, they may be thinking you may have some money on you, some jewelry, and they may uh, attempt to rob you. So the guy would probably somehow sneak in, sit, and they've got a concealed knife, and then they put it on your neck. Or they just hold it like this down here so that nobody in the environment, in the surroundings would see it. And they just simply start threatening you. This is not classified as an attack, but as a threat. And they start threatening you, saying, hey, give me your jewelry, pass me your handbag. Don't make any noise. Don't look around. Just do it quickly and I will not harm you. Things like that. So I may be just resting in a park uh, and the aggressor chooses to pick on me you know they come in a very deceitful way but they've got a, we a hidden weapon and all of a sudden bang and it's on my body and they try to be very quiet so that they wouldn't uh, attract the attention of the uh, people walking around they start talking to you so obviously if you think that you would rather comply than Let's go for that option. If the person wants my car keys or my wallet, I'll just very happily give them whatever they want and happy days. I go home, he goes home, he's happy, I'm not harmed. But if we choose to fight rather than comply, we have to be very quick and explosive. And in this particular scenario, we want that knife to go away from our body as quickly as possible. That's the main objective, that knife. I don't really worry about the hand. I don't really worry what the aggressor is telling me. I want to get that knife away from me. If I'm sitting this way, my hands will be probably saying something like, leave me alone. I, I, I'll do whatever you want. I don't want any trouble. Now, if I quickly move that knife away from my body, that's the step number one. The immediate danger I've protecting myself from the immediate danger. If the knife is up here, same thing. I want it very quickly away from my body. So of course I cannot stop just there because the person could recoil and now they can stab me or they can attack me with that knife. That's it. And then I am in trouble. So, so far it has only been a threat. I don't want them to start attacking me. I don't want to give them time to attack me. So I quickly move with that knife away from my body and then uh, I'm using the other hand to counter-attack right into their face, as hard as I can. So let's do it again. Three steps of Krav Maga, body movement, hand movement, counter-attack. I'm moving it away with my hand. I'm moving my body away and I'm counter-attacking and I'm gonna probably stand up, push and move. So slowly. First of all, I want that now. Moving my body away from the person, counter-attacking while standing. If I hammer the person, the aggressor, into his face, most probably he's going to forget about that knife here in his hand. So I'm not going to do anything fancy like trying to take the knife away from them unless I'm really well trained and I know what I'm doing. I bet all my cards on punching that face. After I've hammered them a few times, I just simply push them away, I disengage, and now it's a completely different game. So, hand movement, body movement, counter-attack, and I want that person away, away from me. Now I'm creating distance, and now it's a completely different game. I've hammered the aggressor a few times into his maybe her face. So they are not gonna be as uh, alert and as convinced to continue the attack. Plus also I'm on my legs now, I'm not sitting down 
And if the aggressor decides to perhaps still continue the attack, I can push them away with my longer legs. And it's again, it's a totally different game. Once again, and I'm moving and I want to, and I want to scan for potential uh, friends of his. So we train self-defense, so we should be expecting always more than just one attacker. I don't want to be too uh, busy with the person right in front of me. I always need to maintain situational awareness. So as soon as I get rid of person here, let's go again. I move, I move away and I look around. We call it scanning because as I said, there could be more than one attacker. Okay, so now uh, the variation to this might be that the aggressor, so that he would not be seen by bypassers or by CCTV cameras, they may put that knife down here uh, on your belly. Now, again, it's the same principle. You want that knife away from your body. So because your hand is naturally already there, we use a C grip, just like uh, in the first scenario. C grip means that I'm going around his wrist with kind of like a, a letter C so that I've got a proper grab. And again, I'm pushing it away from my body. I want to be away from that imminent danger, from that threat. After I've pushed it away from his body, I'm moving my body away, so that's hand, body movement, and again, I want to be counter-attacking. I don't want to put my hand here and try to disarm without hammering the aggressor's face. This, in Krav Maga, we believe is the best defense. And if you, uh, if you want to argue this with people who train Krav Maga, then ask them to punch you in, their fa in your face. And you will understand what we mean when we say that in Krav Maga, we believe that this is actually the best defense, okay? So I move the hand and I'm hammering the face while trying to stand. This hand would probably fall off as a byproduct of me hammering the computer up here. And then again, I push and I'm creating a distance, looking around for potential attackers. The aggressor may not be willing to continue the attack or may not be able. If, even if you are a smaller lady, if you whack someone in their face, even with an open hand, it's going to have some impact. You move away, they may drop that knife. If they've got it in their hand, it may be all over for you because you protected yourself. You took the imminent threat away. You took the advantage from them and they may not want to continue on, so you are safe. So, very simple solution. It's not a rocket science. Always remember these three steps. Body movement, hand movement, and counter-attack. In the case of a knife, I'm trying to go away from that knife as far as I can. Of course, there may not be too much of a distance because he's still holding me with his other hand, but I'm going to help myself with my arm to create the distance. So body movement, hand movement, and I want to be attacking, 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 creating distance, scanning, and job is done. So this was a very simple technique of how to get rid of somebody who threatens you with a knife. Once again, it's not attack. If it was an attack and the person would, let's say, decide to stab me, I would be reacting in a slightly different way to this. But the person is not actually stabbing me, they are just threatening me, okay? So one more time, I said that at the beginning, if you choose to comply, maybe better option, give them whatever they want, your car keys, your credit card, uh, your wallet, they go home, you go home, nobody gets harmed. But if you decide to fight, then this is the option. Knife goes away from the body and I'm targeting the face with the idea to preferably knock out the aggressor as quickly as possible so that I can go away and uh, be free like a bird. <laughs> so thanks for watching, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Hope this was helpful. Uh, if you like our videos, consider subscribing, clicking on the notification button so that you are always notified when we upload new videos. They usually come every week and give us thumbs up. Thank you, Patrick.